Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening. I was studying, and this scripture just kind of jumped out. And uh, I don't think that we realize who we're dealing with when we talk about God. I think that uh, even in the church, sometimes we try to pull Him down to our level. And God is not a God that will be pulled down. There's nobody you can compare Him to. You know, I was just thinking as Brother Josh was talking about Brother J.D., uh, you know, the doctors didn't cure him. That was God. Medication will not do one ounce of good to anybody if God don't allow it to happen. Because I've seen God fix some cancer patients and some he did not. He can fix them all if he wants to. But... If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, uh, we'll be in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, and I'm going to read three verses, and I want to preach on this thought, Your Majesty the King. And uh, I want to just give you the definition of the word majesty when we get done reading these portion of Scripture. And we're dealing with someone that is, can't be figured out. He does things that we would in no way do. We don't have the uh, capacity to love like he loves. Right. We don't have the capacity to think ahead like he thinks. And his, the Bible even says that his thoughts are, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. When I think about God and how He does things is definitely not the way the world or I would do them. God will go into the vilest of sinners and He will save them and put them in His family. We don't want people like that in our family. I've got people in my family way back that was into the They were professional gamblers, moonshiners. We don't talk about them. Seriously, we're not proud of those. But you know, God will save them because he don't think like us. The drug addict that's laying in the curb, we don't see the value, but God does. He sees someone who is broken. And he's so good at bro- broken things and fixing. If you read the story of Job, the Bible says that Job was sitting in the ashes and he took a pot shear and he was scraping himself. That was one broken vessel scraping another broken vessel. God does that. We do not do that. The only way the church reaches out is because that God puts it in our heart. We we don't have that within us. That is not our nature. We don't have it. Only when God reaches into our lives and changes us and saves us and causes us to have compassion on people and see that their lives are valuable. Now listen to what the Bible says in... uh, 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 11. He says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. That's our word for tonight, what we're going to talk about. For all that is in the heaven, think about this, and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Think about it. That ought, to, that ought to just blow our mind to think this is the person who sought us out from the mud and the muck that we were in right. and saved us and put us in his family. What a, 
You know, that ain't how I'd do it. I'd say, I don't, I, no, I, I'm sorry. I, you ain't good enough to be in my family. <laughs> That's how we think, right? I mean, seriously. Amen. We think like, you know, our family, you know, my four and no more. Stay away. That's how we think. Because they are not. Listen. It says, both riches and honor come of thee. Think about it. You're here. Why? Because of him. That's right. Right. I am, brother Ray, what I am by the grace of God. I've done absolutely, positively nothing. I have not thought about a way to change my life. Matter of fact, I have fought God all the way. And you have to. Right. Sure. All the way. It's like taking a kid out. I, when I had our girls, uh, the, the, it was horrible because my wife would just scringe when I would throw them over my shoulder. All the way down, they knew they'd get it. <laughs> They're going to get it. If you make me get up there in church service, you're getting it. And you know what that it is, don't you? God's like, I, I, I love you anyway. Right, yeah. I, I, I don't know here. That God, he, he does all this stuff, reaches down into people's lives. And the only reason Jesus hasn't come back is because there's still somebody he's trying to save. He's not, he's not being hindered coming because so we can have a church service tonight. Right. Me and Brother Josh was talking. I wished he would come before I got to preach because the service that we would have in heaven would surely be better than this one. I'm not complaining about this one. I, I thank God for this one. But what I'm trying to tell you is when we get to heaven, Brother Phil, you ain't seen nothing. You haven't experienced nothing. What we're fixing to experience. And we are the privileged, the privileged, Yes. ones that have been born again bought by the blood of Calvary to get to go in and be part of that right. listen he says and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all now therefore our God we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. I looked this word up and, and it just kind of made me think a little bit. I try not to do a whole lot of that, but sometimes I can't help myself. Because of the way the dictionary give the definition. Usually when you look a word up, it has like a, maybe a sentence that explains what this is. But the word majesty is defined with six words. The word grandeur, beauty, comeliness, excellency, glorious, honor. Those are the six words that our dictionary explains what majesty is. If you look in the word in Psalms in chapter 24, there's a question asked, who is the king of glory? Who is he? And you know what? We haven't got a glimpse. We haven't touched the garment of who this person is. This person is so, so superior, to, you can't even begin to think like he does. Uh, I, I personally, when I think about these doctors that abort children, if I had my way, if they wouldn't stop, I would stop them permanently. You would too. God says, no, I'm going to let them live and I'm going to let somebody witness to them. They may not ever get saved, but they're going to have an opportunity. And God is handing out opportunities still yet today for people to come and get saved. You know why? Because He is God. Now, I want to start with this word grandeur. Here's what the word grandeur means. It means greatness, splendor of appearance, an elevation on thought. That means you can't even think about what he thinks about. Matter of fact, uh, when they had the big discussion, God and Job, and J Job come down to the end, and God said, Job, where was you when the hinds calf? When, when these deer give birth, where are you? Amen. 
What are you doing? How are you taking care of them? He said, I take care of them. I take care of the sparrows that fall from the ground. That's the kind of God that we're serving. Not the kind of God this world thinks about. Not even the kind of world, the God that the church thinks about. He's far more superior than that. Uh, Listen, I'm just going to give you some... Let the Bible explain who He is. In Psalms 145, 3, it says, Great is the Lord and greatly do be praised and his greatness is unsearchable that means you can go on google and say how great is god and he come up and say i can't figure it out those of you that are geniuses and wizards on these computers you can't get an answer on how great this person jesus is there is no definition when you get to the point where you you say well I've, I, I've got the FBI the CIA I've got everybody in America looking but they can't figure him out why because he's unsearchable Amen. there's not a preacher Amen. in America or any other country past present or to come that can tell you how great our God is Amen. how majesty how wonderful how glorious this God of heaven is that he would come and sit down amongst us. Uh, let me ask you, you ever have a bad thought? He said, just since you've been preaching. God knows them. He knows your thoughts. Brother Josh, I'm glad you can't read my mind. I'm glad you folks don't can't read my mind. Because I want to be honest, I don't always, Brother Ray, think good thoughts. Huh? Amen. Huh? We're going to be honest tonight, or are we just going to sit here and look at each other like we, we don't have a clue what you, I'm talking about? But well, we all have thoughts that if we could take these thoughts back, we wouldn't. God loves us in spite of that. Huh? The only thing I can compare it is, is to a mom and dad that loves their kids. It don't matter what your three kids do. You're going to love them. You may not agree with them, but you're going to love them. I love my kids. I die for my kids. But I don't always agree with the way they think. Uh, uh, he's the greatness of Him. The Bible says in Romans 11, 33, he said His ways are past finding out. That means we can't get to the bottom of this. Huh? Uh, in, 19, in March of 1964, my mother died. She was 27. And she died of a cancer that today they wouldn't have to even keep her overnight. Because they have found a way to prevent what was killing her. But in March of 64, there was no cure. They found a way to cure it. But God, they've never found a way to find out how wonderful He is. Amen. We've not found a way how to exalt Him to the place to where people say, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, i figured Him out. No. He's still beyond that. Think about God. Think about this. Brother Josh, one day we will go to heaven we will come back again on white horses. Think about it. The sun, two million miles away from planet Earth, past that is where we're coming on horseback. Think about it. Can you figure out how we're going to do that? Say, well, we're going to sprout wings. No, we're not. No, horses don't have wings. That's some kind of weird thing the devil conjures up. God is going to defy gravity, space, and time, and all of the millions of His children in splendor and glory are going to descend down from the third heaven and land over in Jerusalem. We can't figure that out. Huh? Listen. Uh, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 6 I'm just going to read this one verse. It says, In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Isaiah, 
Do you ever notice, Brother Josh, he don't refer much to that King Uzziah. He don't talk much about him. You can't be, you can't be impressed with that. Huh? I think it was in August of 1977, the King of Rock and Roll died. Huh? We're not impressed. I don't mean this as bad. I, I have no feelings, harsh, bad, or any otherwise, against Elvis. But he's a past. But Isaiah saw, I saw, I saw the Lord. Amen. He said he was so large that his train Amen. filled the temple. Amen. There was no room for nobody else. And I want to say what's wrong with us today is we have too much space in our life for somebody else. We need to have our lives saturated and absorbed in the presence of God Almighty to where there's no room for no one else. Amen. The church, we fall apart because we are looking at President Joe Biden and we think that our Savior has arrived. No, He arrived 2,000 years ago. Amen. He's coming back. He's going to set foot on one of those clouds and those that are born again are going to hear this voice come up here. And we're going to rise to meet Him. Huh? See... I fear that even the church puts too much confidence in politics, programs, or money. We say we don't like money, but we'd die if we didn't have it. Huh? Uh, they're always advertising. It takes two to round her up. <laughs> if it was me and Rhonda, there'd be four of us. <laughs> but you know, we say that money really don't motivate us, but that's not true. We look around you. Go out in the parking lot. And I'm not complaining. God's been good to us. If you didn't have it, where would you be? That's your question. See, we, we, I tell you what we need more than anything in our lives is this God I'm talking about. We need Him. I've heard a fellow talk about his mother. He said, we didn't have one, one item in our cupboard to eat. Not one thing. And he said, I'm up in the attic, up in my bedroom, up in the upstairs, and I heard my mother saying, God... I've got this boy, he needs to eat. He's got a big appetite. This was her prayer for her son. I want him to see what great things you can do. She, he said, my mother prayed that at midnight, and at noon, at 6 a.m., a fellow rode by on a horse and threw two sacks full of groceries. See, that's the God that we serve. You say, well, that, I, I, I don't have that problem. That's because we've been blessed. We've been blessed. Uh, to see God in His bigness means you have to be in places to where He can come up big. Uh, uh, I, I, was, I heard a story. <clears throat> a fellow was uh, talking about his grand, uh, great-grandfather said that he was in, in battle and he said he come around the corner... And there was a Chinese soldier with a gun. And he said that Chinese soldier stood up, took the bayonet of his gun, and rode across. And he went like this. He couldn't speak a lick of English, but what he was telling this American soldier, I'm a Christian. And that, his great grandfather said, me too. They hugged and turned and walked off. That's the God we serve. 
If you don't think God was in that, my friend, you don't know nothing about God. That's how great He is. Great that I feel so unworthy that I can't even try to, st- to tell you what, how great He is. Can't even believe it. The second word is beauty. Now we like that word. But it don't mean what we think it means. When we think of beauty, we, we look at a person or even a place. You know, he can be a car. Amen. Amen. Well, I think uh, there's some old cars. I think they're beautiful. Amen. You don't have to agree with me. That's all right. Don't worry about it. We won't fall out. You know? There's places that I, I have been and seen. And boy, these are beautiful places. Anyone what this means. This word, it means an ambassage of graces or of property in the form of a person. It's not what we look on, but it's that person that's inside. It's the character and how that person conducts himself or herself that is beautiful. Now, the Bible tells us, for, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Do you know what people found attractive about Jesus when he walked on this earth? Was what he was doing. How he was conducting himself. Jesus, nobody, not even the Pharisees, come in contact with Jesus and it did not affect their life. Hmm? Matter of fact, time and time you read in the Gospels when they would say stuff like this, no man ever spake like this man. Uh, He would go and see a woman that was stooped over like this. She's bowed. The Bible says she was bowed over. You know, bowed. And she couldn't straighten up. And Jesus walked by all the important people and touched her. What a God. What a Savior. What's what He done one night in January of 1977? He walked by everybody else at Unity Baptist Church in the corner of Grand and Moore Street and He reached over to an 18-year-old boy and He saved him by the grace of God. And I'm standing here tonight because He come to someone who couldn't help himself, who couldn't walk, who couldn't talk, who couldn't behave himself. But God, the great God that I serve, done that for me. And if you're saved, He done it for you. What a beauty. Uh, What a beautiful person this Jesus is that he would come to the blind. You know, we can't... Brother Josh, we talk about blind people. We can't even begin to imagine what they face. Uh, Do you know what? To be blind, you have to trust somebody. If you go up on Hamilton Avenue, I don't know if it's still there, but it used to be. I was driving down Hamilton Avenue and I don't know, a half a dozen blind people. And I'm thinking, where well, I ain't never seen so many blind people in all my... But just down the street, Brother Eddie, there was an institution for the blind. And you know what Jesus did? He walked up to every blind person he'd come in contact with and give them what they needed, their eyesight. Why? Because when he gave them their eyesight, he gave them their life back. Huh? They weren't dependent on the guy. They weren't dependent on their brother. They weren't dependent on their mother. They weren't dependent on a friend. Do you, you know, you'd have to trust somebody because they would have to pick out your clothes. I, you know, I'm not no fashion counsel. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, you don't have, you, I'm not very big on fashion, you know. But I would like to have my clothes halfway look like they're supposed to go together. You know, I usually Rhonda. She puts all that together, and I, I go with it. But if you're blind, but this beautiful person named Jesus, yes. he made it possible for them yes. to pick out their own clothes, to fix their own food, to make their own way. That's this God we're serving. That's what he done to you spiritually. Right. You're, only, you're not here because your mom and daddy drug you to church. No, that ain't the reason. You're here because God saved you. Give Him an honor. He's the one. uh, 
He's the one. Amen. He's the one, Brother Brian, that sent somebody your way. You know, you see people, you know, you never know. I, I witnessed to an old boy. His name was Kenny Gilbert. I worked with him. And actually, his family, his family was raised up in eastern Kentucky. His cousin was married to my brother's sister-in-law. <laughs> I witnessed to this boy. You know what God did? God sent another preacher, and Kenny got saved. He's in church tonight. Amen. Kenny was a smoking, drinking, cussing, lost man. And he goes to church now. Yeah. That's been over 25 years ago. Amen. Why? Because God, I didn't save him. I wasn't even there when he got saved. But I just gave some push. That's what God does because he'll use his youngins to push people towards this person. Uh, think about this. And uh, Ephesians 2, 7 says that in the ages to come, that means out there in the future there's something coming. Amen. He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You know what? We can't even comprehend how rich God's grace is. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. If I was God and I was dealing with me, I'd have thrown me away a long time ago. Huh? huh? There's probably not a pastor in America that don't resign on Monday morning. And God gives them a reason to keep coming. Because the devil, well, he's a, he's a slick character. He's slick. But God's got, we're one of these days, can you imagine one of these days when we get to heaven? We might <clears throat> understand His grace. I see this lady on television, and uh, she talks about saving, you need to start investing in gold. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to get hamburger, man. Don't worry, don't... <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know what your deal is trying to invest in gold. I'm trying to invest in supper. <laughs> and you know what? You can almost get sucked into that. Huh? Because we look out into the future, but you know we don't have no future. Today's all we have, Brother Clint. This is all we have. There ain't no guarantee we'll be here Sunday. Number one, Jesus could come. Number two, we could leave. Huh? One of us or all of us. There's no guarantee. What we do is we really expect to be here Sunday. We expect our pastor to come. We expect Brother Jordan as adult Sunday school class teacher to come stand up here and teach us a lesson. Somebody will sing. I don't know who it will be, but whoever it is, praise God. But it may not happen. Because it does happen all the time, we take that stuff for granted. There might be a day when it don't happen. Look at the third word. The word comeliness. Comeliness. That which is becoming fit or suitable in form or manner. See, this is another characteristic of God that comes from within. If, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but if you've read your Bible, God always changes within before He changes without. He never takes a hippie and cuts his hair and then saves him. No, He don't do that. He don't do that. He saves that hippie and takes the Word of God and that hippie goes down to the barber shop and gets a haircut because it says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. I, I know that goes contrary to our rock and roll 
uh, age that we in which we live in. But that's just the truth of it. Uh, and that what God does is He. The Bible says that the hope that it is who is it? It's Jesus. You know what we have? We have something inside of us. Not it's not all this. Uh, uh, you ladies, I. Don't get offended. I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings. You know, we buy makeup. And that's fine. Go ahead and help yourself. Do what you got to do. But that ain't what your beauty is. You could be like that and be hateful as the devil. I'd rather for you not to wear no makeup and be nice to me. Amen. But what God wants is He wants something that's inside of you that makes you sweet. Uh, that the world looks at you... Uh, Brother Ed, and he says, you know, I would like to have what that fellow has. There's something about why that's that calmness that Jesus has and that he bestows upon those that gets saved by him. Right. You know, the Bible says, they said in John 7, you can read the whole text, it says, never a man spake like this man. You know why? Because he, he was dealing with them on a realm that the religious folks didn't do. Because the religious folk says you can't. You know, I want to say this to you. Listen to me. These people that have rules, we need some rules. Amen. The right ones, biblical rules. The Bible, the Bible teaches separation. But I want to be honest with you, I've heard preachers talk about how wicked cowboy boots are. <laughs> really? Really? Are you, are you, you going to buy into that? There ain't no truth in that. Huh? I've heard preachers talk about glasses. You, I don't wear them, but it ain't that it's a sin. Those uh, metal frame rim glasses, I, I'm looking to see if anybody's got them on. I can point you out. But they say those are sin. Those are wicked. Really? I'm just trying to see. That's all I'm trying to do. I ain't trying to be evil. But what that is, is they're looking on the exterior, exterior to try to show Jesus. God says, no. If you let the, these people, what would Jesus do? I ain't against all that, them little braces. I ain't against none of that. But that ain't proven that Jesus is doing that. I, I was at a Reds game many, many, many moons ago. I took a kid there that didn't have nobody to spend time with him. And we're sitting there and there's a girl and her boyfriend, I'm assuming, sitting here. And she had that bracelet. What would Jesus do on her arm? Well, she's sitting down there drinking alcohol. And I reached over and I said, Timmy, Jesus wouldn't do that. The reason I told him that is he was young and impressionable and I want him to know Jesus don't drink alcohol. Huh? The religious crowd may, the lost crowd may, but God's crowd don't. Hmm? We're living in a world, Brother Brian, where you can go to church, drink liquor, and chase women, and you're saved. That's not true. Why? Because there's something happens inside of a person that's the, that we have the same spirit that Jesus has. There's something in us that gives us some character, gives us some conduct, causes us to stay home, be faithful to our wives, be faithful to our husband, be faithful to our kids, be faithful to our church, and follow after Him. Why? Because of what Jesus did. Huh? You ever think about this? This is an awesome statement. I'll let you read it. In John 21, it talks about after Jesus had ascended, I think it was, they said this about Jesus. said, I suppose that all the things that Jesus had done, if they were written in a book, the world could not contain the books. Think about that. How many... Brother Peter, you're a smart fella. How many books do you think, if you laid them down flat this auditorium would hold thousands thousands now magnify that by the, the size of the world billions trillions of books God has got his hands involved in everything huh? everything that's turning every wheel that's spinning every car that starts every car that stops God God that we serve that's the God we serve who's got his hand in your life uh, uh, you say, well, things ain't going the way. 
I, I wanted them to go. Praise God, thank God, I'm telling you. You're looking at somebody who's got the same, I've got the, you got the same thing I got going. But it ain't over yet. Because this God I'm talking to you about, he's great enough. I, I, I've already had one miracle. 13 years I didn't see my daughter, my granddaughter. She's sitting right over there. Huh? It took me 13 years, my wife praying. Huh? You said, did you feel, oh yeah, I want to give up. I wanted to. But God does things beyond my imagination. Uh, I've got a grandson, 21 years old. He's shacked up with some girl, and he's got a little boy. I ain't proud of that. I ain't bragging about that. But that's just facts. I ain't give up on God. You say, well, what about your grandson? I give up on him a long time ago. Why? Because it ain't within him to do right. Just like it wasn't in for his grandpa to do right. I wasn't doing right until I got saved. Uh, it's, it's that. Just imagine. I, it just blow, Don't it blow your mind when you think about a God that's so great that the world can contain the books of all the good deeds He would do. Amen. That blows my mind. I can't even imagine that. That's the majesty of the King of Heaven that we're serving. I, I just can't believe it. It's hard for me to believe. The Bible says, or another definition of this word, majesty, is excellency. The word excellency... It means the state of possessing good qualities. Now listen to this. In an unusual or eminent degree. You know, we can say that we know some good people. I think we know some that's sitting in here. There's some good people in here. It goes far beyond that. His, the excellency of God. Listen to this right here. Uh, I have to remind myself when I get frustrated with people I deal with from time to time. I don't deal with as many as I used to. But in Romans 2 it says, in verse 4, Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Do you know what? The state of quality of his unusual goodness is is that he just keeps handing out goodness. God's good to the sinner. They don't even know it, Brother Brian. When we were lost, we didn't know how good God was. Do you know, if God wouldn't have let me live until that night that I got saved, the nights before that, any one of them, I could have got killed and died. And went to hell. So, well, you was only 18. Got nothing to do with that. Because... Before, Brother Ray, I was under conviction. I went to church under conviction. If I would have died on the way to church, I'd have died and went to hell. But it's the riches of His mercy. The qualities of an unusual character of the God that we serve said, I'm going to let... And He was snowing out. Huh? It was during the blizzard. I had a two-wheel drive car. And there's snow piled up on the sidewalk this tall. And I drove right up to the church. Unscathed. Why? Because God said, I ain't going to let nothing happen to him. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because God loves me. You know why you're here? God loves you. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. He loves you. Uh, for God so loved we read that so many times we don't even think about it but he loves us uh, listen listen at this his ex some of his qualities but the fruit of the spirit is love joy see this is this is the, the possessing good qualities in an unusual degree you know what God does? This is His Spirit. He's got love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, 
against such there is no law. You know what God's saying? I'm going to take the way I am and I'm going to put it in you. I'm going to put that in you. And the reason why we can love is because of that same spirit that's in him and dwells us. That's why religious people are the most wicked people in the world. You can't get along with religious people. Huh? Because they got too many rules. See, it's a lot easier to... You know why I, I've never cheated on Rhonda? Because I love her. Huh? I love her, Ray. You know why I come home even in the bad times? I love her. Hmm? You know what God does? He loves me. He loves me and He keeps giving me grace. I've done enough since I've been saved to deserve to go to hell. Hmm? Have you ever had God say, and you say, hello. He'd say, on the other side of the pump over there, you ought to talk to that fellow. And he said, no. God loves me in spite of all that. Hmm? In spite of all my faults and failures, when, I, when I'm like, Lord, I, you know, they don't want to hear. That's, see, that's the lie of the devil. And they probably don't want to hear it, but, you know, that's beside the point. <clears throat> the next word is glorious. It means illustrious of exalted excellence or splendor. You know, you saw that in the Bible on the Mount of Transfiguration when Peter, James, and John they went there and he was transfigured and there was a light that shone him and he was become to where there was just a, a light about him and he put off this light. Then you see it again when Moses when Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments and he came down and he had to put a, over his face. Why? Because his light. So I want to tell you, there, the Bible says, He is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Ain't that amazing? That ought, to, that ought to just do something for you when you think about someone who cannot lie. I want to say this. I want to give a news update about you, your kids. They'll lie to you. Not my kids. Yep. 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 Your kids, they'll lie to you. Huh? And swear up and down. I didn't do that. But God can't lie. Ain't that amazing? You know, Amen. the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And what that means is, <clears throat> every man has the capacity to lie. But every man is not a liar. See, a liar is someone who does it when they don't have to. Now, I'm not promoting lying, but sometimes you might if it thought, you thought it'd save your hide. Uh, you're looking at me funny, but wait till the cop pulls you over and he said, why are you speeding? You ain't going to tell him the truth. You're going to say, well, you know, uh, it's, sir, it's kind of like this. No, the reason you're speeding, you knew it. You knew you were speeding. And you were speeding because you wanted to. Uh, here's the last thing and I'm, I'm closing the word honor it means the, the esteem do him you know what we have failed to give him what he's due we have at our best brother Phil we have failed to give him what he's due let everything that has a voice praise him and we fail to praise Him the way He's deserving. You know, when you think about Him and what He is and all that He's done. Now, when you think about this, and I'm done right here in just a second. I, I, the Bible says, Wherefore God hath highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name. Think about that. Let that soak down into your mind. Think about that name. God has exalted Him above every name. Now the world, they exalt others. You know, it's too common 
that they... The big question is, who is the greatest of all time basketball player? Who is it? LeBron James? I, yeah, they think that. I don't think that. I don't think that. Uh, you know what I think? He wouldn't stand a chance playing against Jesus. Hmm? Because his name is more than his. His ability is more than his. Jesus wouldn't even have to dribble the ball. He'd think it through. Think about it. I'm trying to get you to see this person we're serving here today. This is the person that we're coming in contact with. This is the person, Brother Clint, that we serve. He's got a name. You know what the Bible says about his name? Every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. That means you go back to Adam and Eve and you go all the way forward to the last person that's ever born. I don't care if the last person is born in America, Africa, Europe. I don't care where. But that last person, you know what they're going to do, Brother Peter? They're going to bow down before this person. Yeah. You know why? Amen. Because they're going to give him honor. Amen. And it might be right before God puts them in hell, but they're going to say he's the greatest of all times. There is none that can be compared to him. You can't compare him. There's not a God that can answer a prayer, Brother Tom. You get a job, it won't be through Buddha. Huh? It won't be through the priest. It won't even be through our pastor. But I'll put my money on his prayers before I will the priest. Huh? This person, friend, he is a great. He is great. Greater than I could even tell you. I couldn't excite you enough to let you know how great this person is that reached down into a little old 18 year old boy and saved him from a life of ruin yeah. amen let's stand amen. brother Josh you come did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today and as always thanks for listening